Hey, on this video we will be connecting QNAP to your PC or Mac directly. So, first of all, why would you want to do that? So, the most common uh, situation is that for first initialization backup. For if you, example, if you've got remote backups, you don't want to transfer 10 or 20 terabytes of data uh, over the internet for first time. All you want to do is synchronize the changes. So, for first time, you're going to bring the NAS uh, to your office or something and uh, do the first backup and then take away and do incremental backup. Second option would be if you have slow network. So if you've got only one gigabit network available, but you have, for example, 10 gigabit or five gigabit uh, LAN port or USB adapter connected to your NAS, you might want to take advantage of that. So you want to connect directly. Uh, or if you have so many users connecting even through one gigabit and sharing all this bandwidth, then you might want to have your own LAN connection. So if you've got two LAN ports on your NAS, you might want to have one for yourself and other one shared for the rest of the network. Um, so if you have um, security uh, concerns, so if you don't trust your network, this is again your private uh, connection to your NAS, or if you want to connect through the USB or Thunderbolt like 73E series, that's USB, 72XT series, that's Thunderbolt connection. If you want to connect directly, you, you do that. So that's enough of introduction. Let's dig in, let's start um, setting this up. So first, what we need to do is um, make sure that your NAS is already connected to existing network so that we, we, you can access it through your network uh, instead of having it connected directly. So you go into the NAS first and we will need to set the IP address um, manually instead of automatically. So tap the PC and uh, QNAP can talk to each other when they are connected directly. Otherwise, if there is no DHCP server, which is telling them what IP address they, they need to have, then uh, they can't communicate. So in this case, we're going to keep uh, 10 gigabit um, as it is, and we're going to configure one gigabit connection for our use. So we go to configure, if you go control panel, uh, network uh, settings, you will find this, that um, on this IP address, for example, you can see that IP is set uh, automatically. We're going to go for manual version. You can have uh, any IP you want, really, uh, as long as you're not connected to the rest of the network. If you are connected, you want to keep probably the same IP you got. If you don't, you can create something new. So for example, 1001, uh, 1004, for example, and 10, let's say 10, and subnet was 255, 255. These are the only two things you need to do. You click apply and save it. So at this point, QNAP will have its own IP address, which is never changing. You should actually have this uh, manual IP address set anyway for the um, uh, for your NAS because you don't want ever to have this IP uh, change to be changed. So that's why it should be manual. So at this point, we have manual IP address uh, on the on the a Mac on the QNAP. So we're going to do the same thing on a Mac or on your Windows. So what we do, we go to network settings, open settings go to adapter options find your adapter properties ipv4 properties and uh, normally you will have this uh, set automatically you will switch to a manual option and go for ip address similar to the nas so 1004 if you did 10 there let's say 11 here you need to be different the subnet mask is going to be exactly the same like it is on the qnap that's it, these are the only two things you need to do. That's all done, close. At this point, it's gonna be resetting the IP address to a manual version. And what we need to do at this point is change the connection, connect directly, QNAP and your PC. This is the magical moment. So we disconnect, if you've got only one connection on your PC, we disconnect uh, the network and connecting the cable from a QNAP to a PC. So now we got direct connection. So at this point, again, it's going to check if everything um, uh, is set, the IP address, can they communicate between each other? As you can see, the uh, connection has been created and it's all fine. There's no internet unless you uh, have a second LAN port where you get internet or if you enable virtual switch on the QNAP, which is going to be sharing this internet to your PC. But at this point, we don't have uh, internet access, but we can have access to a QNAP. So let's go to a QNAP. This is the old IP we were accessing when it was connected to a network. Now we're going to go directly 
to a manual light bead, which we set uh, 10 at the end. So as you can see, the connection is there already. So we can log into a QNAP and start using it directly. If you don't want to use um, um, browser method, browser way of doing these things, which is slower, then you can actually map this drive on your computer. You go to my PC, map network drive, uh, do backslash backslash and the IP address you set for the uh, queue now. So 10.04.10 and the shared folder you want to access. So uh, for example, multimedia, for example, and click finish. What's going to happen after? It might ask you for the username and the password for your uh, uh, NAS, but if you have saved this already, it's going to automatically let you in. Uh, and uh, from now on, you're going to be able to see additional network drive along your existing connections, map drives. And one of those is going to be your QNAP NAS. Uh, with a um, Mac system, it's going to be similar. You're going to go to go, connect to the server, and uh, type the IP address and the shared folder you want access. So th that's about it. <laughs> now we have all these connections available already and we are ready to use this uh, connection directly. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can always go to NAS Compares, fill the form on the right hand side or shoot email to info NAS Compares. Uh, if the question will be interesting, we can shoot a video like this so we can help others as well. Cheerio.